Many people live with the burden of feeling anxiety. Some people experience it less, and some people experience it much more severely to the point where it negatively affects your life and you cannot live a normal life. Generally speaking, the term anxiety refers to feelings of nervousness, worry, apprehension, fear, tension, and unease. Around 19.1% of Americans over 18 years old experience some sort of anxiety disorder, and around 31.9% of adolescents between 13 and 18 years old are affected by anxiety disorders as well. I personally experience anxiety too. I've had it for I don't know how many years, pretty much throughout my whole life, but I've come up with a few coping mechanisms and things that can help me manage my anxiety well, and that is what I want to share with you today, starting with social media. Back in October 2022, I decided to permanently delete the last of my social media accounts, which were on Instagram. I don't have Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, or any of these other platforms. The only thing that I still use is YouTube. Social media has been connected to anxiety disorders as well as other mental health issues, so it can actually help if you either dial down on social media use limit your social media use and actually manage it well or if you can't handle that get rid of it completely you will not miss out on anything trust me on that it will do your mental health and your anxiety so much good so if that's something that you still haven't done maybe try that and see how it affects your anxiety the next thing that i do is drink true tea and I know this is going to sound weird <laughs> because what is tea going to do for you? But actually, tea, real tea, and I'm talking about green tea, matcha, white tea, oolong, all of those kinds of true teas actually do have some substances like antioxidants and other nutrients that can help manage your anxiety. And although tea does contain caffeine, it usually doesn't cause nervous caffeine spikes like coffee does. I rarely drink coffee, but when I do, I get extremely nervous. I get shaky hands and sometimes also heart racing. So that's a big no-no for me, but tea doesn't affect me in that way. On the contrary, tea actually calms me down and energizes me in a sustainable and feeling kind of like good uh, way. I usually drink my tea in some form of ritual and I generally combine that with meditation. Which brings me to my next point on how I manage my anxiety well, and that is through meditation. Now, before you say that meditation isn't for you, hear me out. Most people think of meditation as sitting still with your hands on your laps, your eyes closed, trying to think of nothing. While that is one way of meditating, it is not the only way. So, for example, other ways of meditating could be listening to calm and relaxing music while you're doing nothing else, going for a walk in nature, immersing yourself with your surroundings, maybe a forest or the beach, um, consciously looking at everything that you see while you are on a walk, or other things like making music, drawing, and many, many more. Another tool in my toolbox for managing anxiety has to do with the release of the feel-good hormone oxytocin. So ways to get a release of oxytocin are things like petting animals, for example, your dog, your cat, your horse, or any other animal that you might have, or generally speaking, interacting with animals in some form of positive way, as well as hugging other people, maybe your friends, your mom, your dad, whoever it may be, and cuddling your loved one or your partner. That not only releases oxytocin, but it also lowers the stress hormone called cortisol and helps in turn with your anxiety. One very important but often neglected way of managing anxiety better is sleep. And I'm talking about enough sleep and good sleep. So you know, I'm sure you've heard it, the general amount that's recommended is between seven and nine hours of sleep. And you wanna make sure that you get that. Your body is able to regenerate and balance itself during proper sleep, which in turn will help make you more resilient against diseases, stress, anxiety, and many other things. So make sure that you get proper sleep. Don't look at your phone but just before you sleep. Don't do anything else in your bedroom besides actually sleeping or, you know, some other things. <laughs> uh, and, and that's it, you know, just really focus on getting a proper, healthy sleep. 
taking time for myself alone while not feeling lonely is also something very helpful for me. That can mean reading a book by myself, watching my favorite TV show or movie, taking a bath, or tidying up my home so that I feel comfortable in it. Recharging your batteries and doing something only for yourself is important and can help. Something else that might surprise you, or maybe it won't, who knows, maybe you've been thinking about this exact, exact thing, uh, is something that I'm aware that not a lot of people may be able to do. But I have been doing it for as long as I'm working, and that is working part-time. A full-time job is a lot, a lot of work, a lot of stress, a lot of uh, you know, impressions, so it can actually worsen your anxiety. For me personally, I have worked part-time um, a certain amount of hours for the last years, like I said, uh, from the beginning that I started working, and it has been something that is very useful for my mental health and for my anxiety because I get a balance of working and free time, and that is very, very valuable. So if you have the ability to actually do that financially and, and, and in what whatever way, then uh, maybe that is something that you can try to do as well. Maybe at least for some time. Working out and being active is something that I struggle with because I usually tend to not get my ass up to actually do something. Um, but <laughs> I'm sure I'm not alone. I know that there are a lot of people who struggle with this, but whenever I actually do work out, I feel so much better. It helps me feel more energized in a good way, helps my body regulates itself, and also makes me feel much more confident and joyful. And that in turn helps me lower my anxiety and manage it better. So I know it is a struggle, but maybe try to find something that you actually enjoy. Maybe it's not the gym, maybe it's just going out for a walk or for a run, or maybe for a bicycle ride, whatever it may be, find something that makes you feel good and do that. And then you can build up maybe trying to do some other things like weightlifting or calisthenics or whatever it may be that you find. Eating more fruits and vegetables compared to sweets is very hard, I know, but it can make a huge difference within your body. I still eat sweets every other day maybe, but I try to focus more and more on fruits and vegetables because they do such good in your body and can help you manage your anxiety, your stress, and a whole lot of other things within yourself and your body a lot better than sweets do. Because while you think that sweets actually comfort you and can help with your anxiety, they don't actually do that because they cause a whole lot of issues within your body and actually have the ability to increase stress and increase your nervousness and anxiety over the long run. And the last thing I want to mention here today that helps me manage my anxiety well is breathing more consciously and deeply down into my belly. I usually do this when I feel anxious and I don't have the time to do anything else um, and as well as when I feel that I'm about to be anxious because I tend to have a really good feeling of what situations and what events make me feel anxious. So I can anticipate that and I can take, I don't know, three to five deep conscious breaths before that happens. So there you have it. Those are my tips, tools, whatever you want to call them for managing anxiety. Those are the things that I use. I use all of them, not at once, but um, there are a couple of things that you can actually combine. So I hope those tools, those practices can help you. If you have any other questions to those um, tools, then please leave them in the comments below. Maybe you have some practices or maybe you have some um, cool tips for myself and other people as well that you want to leave in the comments below. So please do that. Anxiety really can be managed. You don't have to feel as though it is a life curse for you. Of course, it depends on the severity that you experience it, but there are things that you can do. Whether it is the things that I mentioned today or whether it is that you work with a health professional like a psychologist or a doctor, there are things for you out there. So don't fret, get after it, and don't let it rule your life. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next one. Bye.